Choosing between the new 13-inch and 15-inch MacBook Pros is harder than it's ever been before, now that the 13-inch Touch Bar model packs a powerful quad-core processor. We'll show you all of the differences and run a bunch of performance benchmarks to help you decide which one is right for you. The 15-inch has better speakers, a larger trackpad, and a slightly higher resolution display, which you probably won't notice. Of course, the 15-inch model is quite a bit larger and weighs an extra pound over the 13-inch, making it a lot less portable. In our personal experience, the 13-inch is a lot more comfortable to carry around and use, especially when it's on your lap or in a cramped airplane. The 15-inch, however, is better for long sessions at the work desk, thanks to the larger screen. It also comes with a faster 87-watt power adapter for the larger battery to help charging speed stay the same. However, battery life for both devices is rated at the same 10 hours. Both models come with all the same new features like Bluetooth 5, True Tone Display Technology, updated butterfly keyboard, and Apple's custom T2 chip. And the touch bar is literally identical on both models as well. The first major difference that can easily make up your mind is that the base 15-inch model comes with twice the RAM, and it's faster DDR4 RAM as well. You'll have to pay an extra $200 to get 16 gigs on the 13-inch, but it's still slower LPDDR3 RAM. Both base models come with the 256 gig SSD, and there's practically no difference in speeds. Unlike last year, all four Thunderbolt 3 ports on the 13-inch now run at full speed, but it's packing an integrated graphics chip, so it can't drive two 5K displays like the 15-inch can. There's a huge difference in Geekbench 4's graphics test, and an even bigger difference in the Cinebench R15 graphics test, but that test is also limited by processor performance. Both models come loaded with Intel's 8th gen processors, but for the first time ever, the base 15-inch packs a 6-core i7 CPU. There's not a huge difference in single-core tasks, since base and turbo boost clock speeds are somewhat similar between the two, but the 15-inch shines in Geekbench 4's multi-core test, thanks to the extra two cores. We stress-tested the CPUs by running Cinebench R15 back-to-back -to, -back to let the processors heat up and the cooling system ramp up to the max. The 15-inch averaged a massive 307 points higher than the 13-inch. So if you're going to be doing tasks that constantly max out your CPU, you're getting about 45% more processor performance for 33% more cash. Now let's do some video editing in Final Cut Pro 10, which uses both the CPU and graphics together for the most realistic performance results. As you can see, there's a massive difference when exporting a 1 minute 4.5K red raw clip with added effects. Now with the 5 minute 4K H.264 clip with added effects, the 13 inch model took almost 3 times as long to finish the export. Stabilizing a 4K clip also took way longer on the 13 inch MacBook Pro. We also tested the Bruce X Final Cut Pro benchmark, and again, the 13 inch took almost twice as long. Based off those tests, the base 15-inch MacBook Pro is the obvious choice for video editors. We also noticed the 13-inch Pro's 8GB of RAM was constantly getting maxed out, making it even worse for the base 13-inch model. However, there may be a saving grace for the 13-inch MacBook Pro, the Blackmagic eGPU. If you don't know what that is, watch this video. It's basically a box that holds a powerful graphics chip and connects to your MacBook Pro to boost graphics performance, and based on Geekbench 4's graphics tests, it's much more powerful than the 15-inch Pro's graphics. Now for a Final Cut Pro test, we're exporting the 1-minute RAW clip over twice as fast. We're exporting the 5-minute 4K test almost 3 times as fast, and we've basically matched the 15-inch MacBook Pro in 4K stabilization speeds. To our surprise, the Bruce X benchmark exported faster than the 15-inch MacBook Pro. Although the 13-inch MacBook Pro with the Blackmagic eGPU doesn't quite match the 15-inch by itself, it still greatly improves performance compared to the 13-inch alone. This combo will cost you $2,500, that's $100 more than the base 15-inch, which still has more processor performance and double the RAM. Not to mention, the eGPU is meant to work with an external display, and it's the first one that supports LG's ultra-fine Thunderbolt 3 4K and 5K displays. If you're not planning on buying one of those monitors, there are definitely cheaper eGPU options out there that pack a similar RX 580 graphics card. If portability is a big deal for you, an eGPU may actually be a viable option for much better performance when at home. Now if you don't care about portability, the 15-inch will definitely pack the performance you need for almost any processor or graphics intensive task. On the other hand, if your workload doesn't include graphics intensive tasks like video editing or 3D animation, then the 13-inch MacBook Pro will probably get the job done, albeit slower than the 15-inch model, 
but you will save a good amount of cash in the meantime. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.